um, my name is Wei Hua Huang, and I'm I am the graduate student of the Zhejiang University, and I'm glad to be here to um, tell something about my research. Uh, my topic is calculating the contents of the ferric ion of the CPX from the extra microprom enzyme state using a machine learning method. Um, and uh, this son of the member in my uh, team and uh, they give many help for this research. I really thank you for them. First, let's talk something about the background of my research. Um, the CPX is the main minerals of the upper mantle, and since the iron is a variable element, so it is of great significance to accurately obtain the ferric iron content in CPX. Um, for estimating the mental oxygen uh, fugacity, and uh, evaluating the water content of the mantle, and also accurately applying the geological cementers, uh, we have to, uh, yeah, so, um, and uh, uh, there are uh, two ways for us to get the accurate the contents of the ferric iron in CPX, that is the most bar and the genes. Um, but these two methods, uh, have, uh, are both um, um, cost a lot of money and uh, they have high requirement for the samples to use these two kinds of uh, methods. So it's not very convenient. Um, and uh, there are also some way uh, for us to calculate the contents of the fer ferric iron uh, from their major elements. That is some traditional calculation method and they are based on the change conservation. Uh, but this calculation is not always accurate and reliable. So um, some new methods should be here to uh, solve this uh, problem. And this is the contents of my research. First, I have some data about the major elements of the CPX from the EMPA and also uh, the label that is the contents of the of the ferric fer, 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 uh, the contents of the fer, ferric iron of the CPX, and this date from the most broad spectrum. And I use the method of the machine learning, and then I can train the models for calculating the contents of the ferric iron of by the major elements from of the CPX. Uh, so uh, you can uh, regard my research as a calculator. Um, and for, at first, let's, uh, uh, let's talk about the data set and the method. First, we co uh, collect 387 samples and uh, they cover a wide range of the uh, composition we can see from these two pictures, um, uh, we, we almost collect uh, the sample from almost all the kinds of the CPX. And uh, the method we use in this research is the uh, stratified sampling, uh, linear regression, and the po polynomial regression. Um, first, we use the uh, a stra stratified sampling uh, for the M to uh, let the train training data set and uh, the test data set to have the similar di distribution. And, and we can see uh, this distribution of these two data set in these two picture. The black square point uh, means the train data set and the red circle means the test data, data set. Data set. Uh, and they show the similar distribution. And then uh, I use the, uh, first I use the linear regression um, and I, it, we can see that the horizon coordinate is the referred value, that's the real value uh, tested by the multiple 
a structure and uh, the vector and the vertical coordinate is the predict value uh, that is predict by our uh, mode models that's uh, I mean the linear regression mode and I and we can see that those points nearly fo follow a one to one turn and um, it means they fit uh, uh, um, good um, and this is the result the R square and the RMSE and then I use the uh, poly, polynomial regression um, we can see uh, the result is a bit good, better than the linear regression. Um, but I think they are not good enough, so I uh, do some uh, improvement. Um, because my label, that is the contents of the ferric ions, it is measured by the Mossbar spectra. Um, but uh, this, um, but the the most ball spectra can, cannot um, uh, test the contents of the ferric ion uh, correctly. It means there are some error in my label. And the biggest this, uh, contribution of the error is the uh, re recovery fraction. And um, if we do not consider the, the recovery uh, fraction, there, there would be a a bigger error in my label uh, that would that would um, uh, that that would forbid me to get a better model, better models, um, and uh, we can see this um, uh, the 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 a uh, the a means the area, um, the the most bar uh, is a spectra and the. Uh, uh, people always uh, calculate the uh, um, cal calculate um, the contents of uh, at the, the rate of the fer ferric uh, ion uh, by the rate of the air area of the spectra, uh, and uh, if we want to get the uh, the real value of the um, the, the rate we have to time the recovery fraction that's the C in the uh, in in this for formulate and we can see after we consider the recovery fraction we get a much better result uh, also we use the pol polynomial uh, poly pol polynomial regression and uh, it show a better result and then we com uh, compute, and uh, this this is the com 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 comparison between the machine learning models and the traditional calculation models and uh, me methods. Uh, we can find that um, the machine learning models show a better result than the traditional calculation models um, methods, and we also find that. Um, the traditional calculation method cannot give an um, uh, accurate and a reliable result. Um, so, and, and, and uh, also we predict uh, um, the contents of the ferric iron, uh, ions and it show, um, it, it, it show a great one-to-one -one turn And this is my uh, conclusion. Uh, con conclusion. Um, the traditional me method based on the uh, change conservation are in inaccurate and unreliable. And uh, we success and we successfully trained the models that can be used to estimate the ferric iron contents of the CPX. Um, that's all. Thank you. Okay. Could you turn to the Last page. Uh, this. Uh, yeah, the page before. Thank you. Uh, yes, th this page. Yes, and so the audience tell from China University of Geosciences, Beijing, and they ask question: 
He said that your you said that the traditional weights that used to estimate that fair iron and total iron are not reliable or have some disadvantages. So could you talk about their problems in detail? Um, we can see this picture. Uh, we can find that um, if the uh, if the rate of the ferric iron uh, and the uh, total iron is really low, you can see that the predict value um, is uh, is far away from the real value. So if you use the traditional calculation method to uh, get the rate of the ferric iron and the total iron, uh, the, the total iron, uh, you will make a big mistake when you apply this rate. Um, okay, so do we have more questions from the audience? From other audience? Yes, hello. This is Tuhin. Uh, hello, uh, uh, Mr. Wang, thank you for this nice presentation. So what I'd like to ask is this uh, a part of it, a part of your, in a part of your presentation, you have so, uh, shown this stratified data collection method. So I was hoping if you could elaborate on that a bit. Uh, uh, do you get me? Uh, uh, could could you speak a bit s slower? Oh sure sure. Uh, like uh, uh, during your presentation, you have uh, shown this stratified data collection method. Just before this, before this regression stuff, there are three you, ways you have uh, discussed. Right, the first one was stratified data collection. Uh, you mean that collection? Fen san fen yeah. Uh, uh, um, this page. Uh, the one before this. Uh, this page. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, the stratified uh, uh, sampling. Uh, what? What is this? Uh, can you please elaborate on this a bit? What exactly uh, is this? Uh, how uh, do you do uh, the stratified sampling? Uh, Oh, uh, I use the k-means um, to get three kinds uh, to 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 uh, to cut my date into three kinds, and I take uh, eighty percent um, from uh, each kind of my date for the training date set and the last 20% 20, uh, 20 for the test data set. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't get it properly. I mean, um, how do you... I, 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 I split uh, my total date um, into three kinds of date by k means, um, and uh, I take eighty percent uh, from each of the three kinds for the training data set, and the uh, last twenty percent of the date um, as the test data set. Okay. Okay. So it's like the how did you divide it in three types like ulestonite, enstatite, and ferrocellite? These type, I mean, these end members you are dealing with. Uh, uh, I, I, I can't understand your question. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> Um, I use the K means and uh, he uh, split into three kinds. The first kind is is the CPX in this in this pic in this picture. Uh, oh, that's uh, the yes. Under uh, under second kind is the uh, the OMP. Yes, 
um, and the third kind is the JD and the AG and the AGT. The first kind is all of those, um, uh, th those two PX. And to him, I could explain it maybe more. So yes, uh, this is not just divided by one kind of mineral, so they depend on the composition. So these are three types are not just the pure end members in mineralogy. So the K means is one type of method in the unsupervised training. Which I, I think maybe in the machine learning group, they could make a video about K means, which I think it was explained before speaking Chinese uh, of how to get the uh, numbers uh, in the data set in the high dimensional space so that uh, they could um, converge into different groups according to that distance to the center. So that's the k-means method. I think they could make a whole lecture about what this k-means and how do we use k-means to, to, to do the calculation. Okay. Um, but this is some basic principles. So they don't just divide into three types according to three different minerals. No, it's not. Uh, okay. okay. Okay, okay, so, okay, so the question was from Tohin and from Indian Institute of Technology, Karakpur. So next next question, please. Okay, with that, thank you very much, everyone. And uh, thanks everybody for joining our uh, weekly presentation um, today. And uh, have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Yes.